Hello everybody. Today I'd like to show you how to solve equations. And I'd like to show you a different way than the way I was taught and the way I think many students typically learn it. Uh, and it's called the cover-up method, which is a really cool way that, uh, that I learned at some point. Um, and it's a way that helps, I think, students make sense of what they're doing. Too often when students are solving equations, they're just memorizing steps and copying procedures, and they, they don't really even understand what they're doing anymore, uh, and none of it makes sense. So I think when students solve using the cover-up method, I think it makes a lot more sense and un students actually understand what they're doing. So in an equation like this, 4 times x minus 6 equals 2. Students start thinking, well, I have to do like additive inverse and multiplicative inverse and I have to get rid of numbers on both sides and whatever I do to one side I have to do the other and they have all these things that get stuck in their head and all these rules that they have to follow. But if you just simplify it a little bit and turn it into a simple subtraction problem, it's really quite easy. So in the cover-up method what you do is you just cover up a chunk of the equation, the chunk that has the variable in it. So I'm going to just cover up that 4x for a minute. And now it's just a simple subtraction equation. What minus 6 equals 2? And that's really easy. 8 minus 6 equals 2. So whatever I'm covering up there must be equal to 8. And what I'm covering up is 4x. So I know 4x must be equal to 8. 4 times x equals 8. So if you want, you can just keep that in your mind, or you can rewrite it. 4x equals 8. Now let's do the same thing. 4 times what equals 8? And you could think, well, this is multiplying, so I have to divide to get rid of the times 4. But I think if you're thinking steps like that, you're making it too hard. 4 times what equals 8? 4 times 2 equals 8. x equals 2. So if you just cover that up and think, well, what does that have to be? x must be a 2. And it really works pretty well. It works anytime there's an equation that has just one variable in it, one x term. Uh, if there is more than one x term, you have to combine like terms before you can use the cover-up method. So let me show you this one. So x plus 5, all divided by negative 3, is equal to 5. But if we just cover up this chunk of the equation that has the x in it, it's just a simple division problem. What divided by negative 3 is equal to 5? And I know the answer is positive. So a negative divided by a negative makes a positive. So this must be a negative up here. And I know negative 15 divided by negative 3 is equal to positive 5. So this chunk that I'm covering up here must be equal to negative 15. So x plus 5 equals negative 15. So if x plus 5 is equal to negative 15, now let's solve for x. Let's do it again. Let's cover up this chunk. What plus 5 equals negative 15? If you just stop and think about it, it makes sense that negative 20 plus 5 equals negative 15. If you start at negative 20 and get 5 places bigger, you get to negative 15. So this x, this chunk, must be negative 20. So I hope that makes sense, um, because the goal of math is not to confuse people and not to memorize steps, but hopefully this is helping you to figure out what the x number must be uh, in a way that makes sense. So this is video number one. I'm going to show you two more videos that use the cover-up method, and you can uh, find those on YouTube if you'd like to learn more.